Alright guys, it is officially the six month mark of my Noba year, so cheers to that. Alright guys, I had to get that intro in one take because I only have one beer left to my name. Maybe for a six month anniversary of a no buy year or a six month marker of my no buy year, I should really have a glass of champagne. But now that I'm living that post kidney life, I typically tuck her out after like one or two glasses of alcohol, much less a whole bottle and I'm single and I have no one to share it with. So beer it is. This is actually a lovely gluten-free beer, which is the last one I have because I found out that I in fact do not have celiac disease which is awesome. And so in the good news department, I'm just gonna drink the last of my celiac friendly gluten-free beer and celebrate the fact that we are six months into my shopping ban. I've learned so much over this year and I wanna share some of that with you. But until then, one quick swig to celebrate because it is hotter than balls outside and your girl's thirsty. <sighs> Awkward. All right, putting the beer down so I can actually record some of this video. I'm really excited to actually be recording this video because we are six months in, as I stated, and I have been on a no-buy streak since January of this year. And that means, for those of you who maybe just showed up, I don't know, I can only buy things that are essential for my survival for the entirety of the year, but I can still buy things like food, gifts for other people, charitable donations, things for the house or for my business. And when I say things for the house, I mean repairs for the house if a window breaks or a door breaks or I need to replace carpet or something astronomical like that. I'm absolutely allowed to do it, but I cannot buy things that are fun to make the house better, like um, new patio furniture, um, new linens, new throw pillows, stuff from the Target. You know, I can't do stuff like that, um, but I can buy things for um, home decor if it's for Airbnb. I rent out the two rooms that I have spare for Airbnb. And so for full transparency this year, I've had to go to Target and buy home decor in order to rent out the second of the, the second of my two rooms. But that was within the realms of my no buy year. It was within the rules and so that's okay. It's a business expense and I only got just enough to make the room comfortable for a guest. I hope I have accomplished that. But other than that, I can't buy anything for myself. So everything in my space, unless somebody buys me something, is exactly what I started the year with, which I will get into in a bit because I will recap some of the exciting gifts I've gotten that have been on my no buy list. But until then, let's start with a couple of the high level things I've learned from the six month mark of this no buy year and just get right into it. Ah, so good. The taste of success. Well, a couple things I do want to share about my no buy year is that the first five months of not shopping, I felt really lost. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I'm not going to lie and say that it was this amazing transformative experience, which it actually has been, but I went through a lot of low periods just getting through the first five or six months of the year. I actually got a hate comment on two of my videos that, oh my gosh, why are you struggling with depression? Why are you struggling with this? It's just stuff. And I was like, ouch, also screw you like a little bit, right? Um, not only was I going through a no buy year from January onward, but that was around the same time that I was really bunkering down and committing to donating a kidney to a person I didn't know before. So dealing with the stress of kidney donation and not having my old standby of shopping was to be completely transparent, a total challenge for me. I leaned on shopping a lot and I didn't realize how much it mattered to me. Shopping for me was like a big middle finger to stress. Uh, if I think about it, every time I've been through a stressful period as an adult, I view shopping as this like empowerment thing, which is kind of odd. I was thinking about it and a few years ago, about five or so years ago, I actually called off my wedding. Maybe it was less than five, maybe it was four years ago, but I, anyway, I called off a wedding and I was able to move out and get my own place and shopping at that point was a big like middle finger to my ex, a middle finger to that situation. All right, so starting off, just a little bit of reflection about my first six months of my no buy year. I have to say, for full honesty, the first five months were hard, but in a way that I didn't expect. Um, I Maybe this tampers the data a little bit, but I was also getting ready for a kidney donation around the same time I started my no buy year. And what I didn't realize, and of course I wouldn't change this for the world at all, 
Well, what I didn't realize is that shopping was really a crutch for me, that whenever I was having a good day or a bad day, it was either like a salve for, oh, you had a bad day, you deserve it, or shopping was also like, heck yeah, girl, you crushed it this week, you also deserve to go shopping and buy whatever you want, or you know, getting a raise at work, or really doing well, or doing something out of my comfort zone, getting ready for a trip. Like I used shopping to mark the milestones of my life and to celebrate or soothe myself accordingly. And I have to say donating a kidney was emotionally taxing and at times it was really lonely for me because most of the people in my life didn't know I was doing it until I got the okay from my team that yes, it in fact was going to happen and I was ready and it was really gonna be a thing. And then I finally announced it to my crew and to my my work and everybody else and I felt this huge relief. But the first five months of my no buy year, I had no idea how much I was depending on shopping as a self-soothing agent. And that was really eye-opening for me, even in this first six months. Um, I was thinking about it that four or five years ago, I want to say, I actually called off a wedding with a guy that I was totally smitten for and totally thought I was going to spend the rest of my life with. And I remember back then too, through a large stressful period of my life, I doubled down on shopping then too. I moved out of his condo and I got my own place, which required me to buy all new furniture, which is fine. But I also remember distinctly, my thought process was I deserve new clothes and I deserve a new wardrobe. I want to reinvent myself. I don't want to look or feel the same as I used to. And I spent a lot of money on hair care, getting my nails done, new makeup, new jewelry, new clothes, new everything, um, not beyond the scope of getting ready for a new home. Um, and it was basically a Beyonce style middle finger to the situation I had just left of showing like, look at me, I can handle this, I'm empowered and I have the stuff to prove it. And really that kind of set the cadence for the rest of my life. Whenever I felt good or bad or, or indifferent, shopping was like my go-to. It could mark a great occasion of like, I got a raise, I deserve new boots. Or it could be a marker of I'm having a really rough day and I feel ugly and this new dress will fix that. So emotionally, I'm a shopper. And I actually got a couple hate comments in some of my videos, which I thought was interesting. When I had videos talking about minimalism and depression or what it's like to go through a down period or a lull. And this one particular person reached out on two, two of my videos and actually said like, oh, that's so dumb that you get depressed over stuff. It's just stuff. And right, it is just stuff. It absolutely is just stuff. But what a no buy year is about is actually taking a look at the behavior that causes you to do the stuff. It's like almost saying being sad that you can't drink or smoke or um, date anymore, whatever it is. It's not necessarily the substance or the thing, it's the behavior that you're really trying to address because if anyone has an addictive personality or a big life change um, that they're giving something up, you're not really, it's not the thing, it's the emotions behind the thing. And that absolutely, you're entitled to feel how you feel, which, you know, whatever hate comments are what they are, but I thought it was interesting. I also realized, and this was an insight to me from the comments that I've gotten from many of you, is that many of us come to decluttering or doing a no by year after a great life change. So whether you're going through a, uh, calling off a wedding, moving across country, starting a new job, job loss, the loss of someone special in your life, sometimes you start looking at your stuff as a way to take control of an uncontrollable situation or simply because your financial and personal situation necessitates that you really grab the bull by the horns and declutter very quickly. Um, some of the people that have reached out to me on Instagram um, really went through a divorce and now they're on a very tight budget. So they were literally unloading everything they could to save money and to live under a whole new financial out, you know, outlook. And they're adjusting to that life. Others have decided to you know, go and downsize because they want to pursue a life on the road or get a new job in a new city and the stuff was holding them down. Minimalism and decluttering often comes with a lot of change. And so I think it's interesting that I did this no by year while I was also getting ready to donate a kidney. But if there's anything I've ever learned, even though I went through a personal lull and kind of a de kind of a depression-ish during the first five or six months of my no by year, I have to say that the act of decluttering itself and not pursuing itself addresses a lot of the emotions that you're feeling and really gets you to look at the root cause of what you're feeling and doing. But also it sometimes comes on the, the coattails or rides on the coattails of a very big life change that you have. And for me, it wasn't just donating a kidney. 
it was also on the fact that my significant other of four years who I thought I was going to spend my life with, well, we broke up and it meant that I was processing my normal knee jerk reaction to that and how I normally cope with things and change. How I broke, uh, how I dealt with this breakup this time was significantly different than how I dealt with my calling off my wedding. I really wanted to handle it the same way both times, but this time I'm trying to choose other things in order to self-soothe, to explore my emotions, and to break out of the cycle that I was in for so long. All right, and I hope I didn't just smudge my lipstick. We'll see. Um, another swig of celebratory beer. Mmm, so good. Anyway. I wanted to go over some of the common themes of my temptations list. So if you've been watching my channel, you probably know that each month I post a roundup of all the big items that tempted me for the month. So I'll usually take pictures while I'm in store or take a screen grab when I'm on Instagram of all the things that I would have normally bought without a second thought and uh, just, you know, paid for it and then got that jolt of wonderful hormonal dopamine that comes in when you see an Amazon or other package at your doorstep when you get home from work. But um, I document all of those things and I think it was interesting. I looked through all of my roundups, which you can also see on my Instagram channel, shameless plug, and I took some themes from all of the things that I saw month over month. The first thing is that one thing I absolutely love month over month is anything iridescent like that oil slick vibe or adorable, I seem to be attracted to. I seem to have a uh, thing for kawaii and cuteness and just fun, bright colors. You can see this on my Instagram handle in general. It's just funny to me because like my shopping habits are just, just obvious. It's really funny, I don't know. Another thing I wanted to outline is the fact that I went through all of my temptations that I document on my Instagram handle. Um, I do a roundup every single month of all of the items that I would have bought had I not been on a shopping ban. So the things that really tempted me to go into my shopping cart, I take a screen grab or a photo when I'm in store of all of those items and I put them on a carousel at the end of every month. And they're also on my YouTube channel for my monthly recaps. Well, I went through all of those and kind of took a look visually at everything that was on my list and tried to find some themes as to what are my triggers? Because as I feel from doing a shopping ban, and I hope if you're ever doing a shopping ban yourself, you'll take a minute to pause and look back and document as much as you can to not just be about deprivation, but also about self-discovery of what really tempts you to shop or gets you to spend your money when you're not really thinking about it. I looked over all of my temptations and this is what I found. All right, so trigger numero uno. Anything that's iridescent or kawaii or like super cute, I want it. Whether it was a pusheen poof or a really cute iridescent backpack or really cute iridescent glassware. I seem to like anything that has that oil slick rainbowy clear vibe to it. Yeah, I'm a sucker for that. And I could see that aesthetic in pretty much all the months, it was always there. That look was always there. So I'm kind of happy that at least I've been consistent because one of my bad habits of my previous pre-shopping ban life was that my um, my style was all over the map, right? Like sometimes I would like very preppy things. Sometimes I would like very gothy, earthy things. Sometimes I looked like Stevie Nicks. Other times I looked like Kesha. Like I, I couldn't decide what my aesthetic was. So in that regard, the iridescent backpack, the, the cute kawaii uh, pushing poofs, all those types of things, unicorn, pretty much everything. Like it all kind of makes sense to me looking at it month over month. And it also kind of funny fits my Instagram feel in general, another shameless plug. So be sure to check it out. I seem to like rainbows and shiny things and cute things. So I should have known that before, but I'm kind of surprised at how consistent I've been over the last six months. Aesthetically, I'm kind of proud of myself. All right, so the next thing on my list after my battery dies for the 800th time was candles. Right, candles. Uh, I'm not really surprised by this because your girl loves candles, but even though I've been trying to be very intentional about what I'm having in my life and what I'm using up, because that's the point of a no by year, not only to not shop, but to be very mindful of what you have in your space and use it up as often as possible. I've used up a ton of candles, but there have been a lot of times that I've wanted candles on my list, like a lot. There have been a lot of times where it just keeps coming up in that I am a sucker for candles. I'm also a sucker for lip colors, which is the next thing on my list. I've been wanting a berry lip color for months, 
for months and I still want one. Um, but it's interesting to me to actually see what makes it on the list. And I find that I have not only common themes, but like things that are timeless and that I'm still lusting over. Um, so I think it's insightful instead of just jumping into things and going out and buying anything willy nilly to really see what makes it into that satisfactory list that really makes you drool, that makes you excited, you know, that really gives you that satisfaction over the long term instead of that quick hit of dopamine. That's what I'm pursuing this year. And so I'm not really surprised that candles and lip colors have made it on the list so many times, but I kind of am too on the other hand. And you know, the last insight I have for my temptations list as I've been documenting them throughout the year is the fact that Instagram has probably been the worst offender. I don't really feel super triggered by the things that are advertised on Facebook or on TV, but man, overall, month over month, I saw that most of my temptations, especially products that I hadn't been introduced before, introduced to before or you know wasn't really at top of mind I hadn't bought in a long time of course when I'm scrolling on Instagram they know everything about your behavior and they know what triggers you and um, you know the how to serve you ads and how often to serve you ads because that's what I do for a living but man I was really surprised I don't go to Target anymore um, I did to go get some things for the Airbnb to make sure it was stocked, but I don't really go to Target to even get tempted anymore. I don't really do online shopping anymore. I don't go to the mall much anymore, but I would have to say the last holdover where I get the most temptations is Instagram. And so that was something for me that maybe I need to pivot my behavior a little bit, but it was insightful for me that I gave up malls really easy. I gave up Target pretty darn easy, only going for essentials or for my business, running Airbnb at my house. Um, but other than that, man, I gotta watch out for Instagram because it'll get you. All right, so here's where the interesting stuff comes into play. How much have I saved from doing a no buy year? All right, so dramatic drum roll, please. And hopefully in post, I find a drum roll sound that I can put in here. I have saved over the course of six months, $2,417.48. That's 2,417.48, which is an average per month of $402.91 that I would have spent. So $2,400 would have been gone for a variety. And if you look at my Instagram handle, you'll see that it was all over the map of just like little things that wouldn't have added very much to my bottom line or my quality of life. But it's bonkers to me that $2,400 would have been gone without a second thought, but now I'm using that money to invest, which is really exciting. So $2,400 may not seem like a lot of money to you, especially when you're thinking about, gosh, the pain of giving up the dopamine hits I get when I shop or the fun Amazon packages that show up and make my day. Is $2,400 really worth it? Well, yes and no. Number one, I figured out that I like the fact that I am getting my anxiety levels down by keeping my house cleaner and more organized and more efficient. Um, today was a good exception. I couldn't find the adapter for my laptop today, which is frustrating, but overall my space has gotten a lot cleaner from doing a no by year. And I'm not constantly having to sort things, put things away, deal with things, put them off to donate to Salvation Army or Goodwill. I basically, everything that's around me is what I'm gonna have for the year with the exception of people buying me gifts. Um, and I actually kind of like having that peace of mind. So in that, res in that respect, $2,400 made a lot of difference in my mental health and my mental well-being, and curbing my anxiety and just making my place a little bit more peaceful. But I wanted to bring up the fact that investing is so impactful. It may not feel like a lot now, but if you invested that $2,417.48 over the course of 10 years with an 8% annual return, that would equal a investment growth that leads you to $5,219.16. I'm not really good at math, but I did a calculator online. So if you took the $2,400 and just put it there and didn't even add anything to it, annually it compounds or whatever, that would double over double your money in the course of 10 years just by sitting there. If you put it in you know, a bank that gets, or an investment, I'm sorry, that gets about seven to 8% annual return, $5,000. I can tell you none of the things I would have bought, though they would have brought me joy in the moment, would have made $5,000 in value to my life. No lip color, no t-shirt, no backpacks, no candles, no nothing would have doubled my money like that. And so it was really insightful for me. $400 on average doesn't really seem that 
impactful. But over the course of a couple years, if I just put that money away and don't think about it and don't miss it, it's the easiest way for me to make more money without actually working for it. So the next time you're like, ah, I can't do a no by year, I can't do a no by month, it just isn't worth it to me, think about that. If you can just siphon off even $100 a month and put it in an investment like an index fund or anything else and you get maybe a seven to 8% annual return, you can easily double your money in 10 years and you wouldn't have to work for it for even a minute. Like that's amazing to me. So something to keep in mind. It's really powerful and uh, it's really been a thing that's kept me on track of like what can my money do for me instead of me working for my money and instead of just you know chasing the dopamine, putting the money away before I even know it's there and just avoiding shopping is the easiest way for me to make more money without having to work for it. All right, all right, so I have had technical difficulties recording this video. It's fine, it's cool. It's six months into my no-buy year. I have a beer, things are good. Mm, so good. But I wanted to thank all of you for being on this journey for me. I have learned so much and been through some highs and lows with it, but having your comments along the way have really made a difference for me. Some of you reach out on YouTube, others of you reach out on Instagram when I post my monthly updates. And I just have to say it keeps me very inspired and I just love hearing from you. So. First things first, before I wrap this video, thank you for being the awesome person you are because you're making a difference in my life and I hope that these videos make a difference in yours. All right guys, so that pretty much wraps up my six month recap. I'm gonna enjoy the rest of my beer. I just have to say in closing, in my closing thoughts, I would say this. Doing a no by year, if you've ever considered doing it, is a great way to slow down and be mindful about your life and your choices. It's a good way to figure out what your triggers are even though sometimes it is painful to look back at of all the things and the, you know, sometimes the $700 months or the $400 months of things you almost bought without thinking about it, that insight is absolutely priceless. And one thing that I'm the most excited about is not only do I feel like I have a better grasp on my home life, meaning my space around me, being able to rent out my other spare room and bring in some income there to cover my mortgage every month, which is hugely helpful and a huge financial relief for me, but also this experiment has also meant that overall I'm spending less time pursuing, managing, cleaning, and decluttering because I simply don't have to stem the tide of new stuff coming in in my life anymore. And that's brought a lot of peace to my life. Of course, it's also caused a bit of a challenge for me to decide what I want to replace it with. Like, okay, now that I'm not shopping, as you've seen in some of my other videos, what do I want to do with my life? I found that I've been more vulnerable, more open, more authentic, more present when I'm with my friends. I find that I try to think about how I'm feeling instead of just chasing something else. I find that I reach out to my friends a bit more than I used to for conversations and text messages to lean on them for emotional support as opposed to hiding in the target clearance racks, which has been pretty great. And I'm really excited to see where the next six months of my life go. I'm so excited and relieved that the kidney donation surgery is behind me and we've hit the six month mark because now I'm planning the rest of my travel for the year. And before I know it, it will be time to go home and see my family and also celebrate the holidays. So I can't believe it's already July. My birthday is like now, which is amazing and I'm pretty excited about it. But yeah, things are going really well and I'm gonna go you know, wrap this video and I'm gonna go finish my beer and celebrate the fact that I've made it this far. And also one last time, thank you for being here with me. So until next time guys, thank you so much for spending your time with me. You can do anything with these 10 or so minutes, but you chose to spend them with me and I want you to know how much that means to me. So until next time guys, stay beautiful, stay sparked, and I'll see you next time.